Okay, welcome to the Tooele City Library board meeting, uh, August 15th, 2024. Let's take roll. Uh, Crystal Ford. Crystal Lama. Julie Brock. So Julie Brock. So Melody can hear. <laughs> Sorry. Berna Sloan. Ch Chase Randall. <coughs> Malcolm Walden. Chanel Roth. Eric Niven. And, right. and Melody Gochis had asked to be excused for due to some medical re for medical reasons today. Okay, well we've got some general announcements. Okay, do you want me to read these or do you want to read them? I was going to, yeah, I, for okay. my report. Yeah. Okay, so um, just the report that I've got for you, you all, some cool general announcements. So the first thing, I'm super excited for this, it's going to be a big change for the library, um, is we are changing our catalog, or if you want to get fancy, our integrated library system, our ILS is what it's called. Um, so the catalog page is going to look totally different. It's going to be 10 times better, in my opinion. So the current system we have is both expensive and it feels and looks like it was made 20 years ago and never, never improved since then. Um, it's also ridiculously expensive. It's about almost $20,000 a year, and we started at $10,000 a year 14 years ago. So every year they've been jacking up the price, um, and the system is the same. So one of the big projects I've been working on over the last three months was investigating other vendors for managing our library's catalog. And um, the one we're going with... Chase, can I correct? Go ahead. Does the catalog, is that everything? Yeah, the, the system that we use to manage library cards, manage books, okay. so, our movies, okay. everything. So the computer system that manages the library. So we're switching to what's called Koha Aspen. Koha will be the front, the side that the the staff uses, and then Aspen, it will be like what patrons will see when they look in the catalog. Um, other libraries have moved to them because we're going to be paying only $8,000 a year rather than $20,000 a year. And the product is significantly better in practically every way. Um, so that's going to be a significant savings for the library, over $12,000 a year. Um, plus, it looks so much better, it acts so much better. Um, Spanish Fork has this same system so if you're curious you can look at their catalog page and see what ours will eventually look like and i'm so excited um much more many more details to come in future library board meetings about that but my projected timeline is by march of next year that we'll switch over um next so a funny story so uh, in our last meeting back in april i can't remember if i mentioned that one of the things i'd done was i ordered all the garfield books so like the Garfield collections of the Garfield comics. Because I remember as a kid going to the library and I would check out all like all the Dilberts and then all the Garfield and all the Calvin and Hobbes and stuff. Well, I decided, I checked our catalog at the time and we didn't have very many of those things. So I dropped, I bought over 60 Garfield books. Um, you wouldn't know it because if you went over to the shelf where we keep them all, they're all gone. The, the, the time span in which they're on the shelf is measured in hours, not days. So um, I was super excited about that, so I'm ordering even more. And I've just now, in this last order that we're still putting them on the shelf, is all the Peanuts comic collection. So I'm excited for that. I, I found that to be really fun. Can you define ton here? Just, <laughs> just, 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 that's a technical term. Hey, there's, <laughs> if I order enough books, we'll get there. Um, so updates on, so I know, so I just want to do a follow up. I know last October, um, we had the, pa the, the patron from Stockton who, during the public comment period, addressed our, our banned books display. Um, and I'm just reporting that this year we, we have moved it. It's going to be more in the adult section where the large print and that back corner area, um, which I think is a more appropriate place for that. And also a different staff member is going to be running that display. So did you say banned, banned, banned books? Oh, banned. Sorry, yeah. Uh, B-A-N-D. But yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. banned books displayed and it's just she's instead of just copying and pasting what the American Library Association puts out she's doing kind of a history of banned books and so like got Harry Potter in addition to some of the more controversial titles nowadays so it's a bit more of a mix um, I think that that's an improvement over the way that we've handled it in the past so and I'm more than happy to take questions if you guys have any on that um, 
Next, some fun stats for you all. Um, our Libby titles, so this is Overdrive, Libby, our Libby titles were checked out by other libraries 79,194 times last year. So that showed that's the copies that we've purchased that our patrons are like, hey, our patrons don't have any holds on them, so then patrons at other libraries can check them out. And if you compare that, our checkouts for our library was 103,660 checkouts in the last year on Libby. So it goes to show Libby just keeps on growing. And, I love Libby. And I've Thank actually... You. That's one of my big goals this year with my with the collection development budget is I'm investing um, significantly more money in our Libby collection, and I think it's already paying off. I've I have like five holds coming one day. Oh, I know. Yeah, I must have read them all. Next person. I'll be next. I, I hate to keep interrupting. Go ahead. Libby is the the audiobooks and the ebooks app, so you can listen to the audiobooks and oh, read the ebooks. Yeah. So, What's so you word? download it on your phone. And you just find whatever books you want. You can read them. You can. There are audio books. There's magazines. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. I've never done an audio book, so I'm, I, you should. There's be able also to try. books. Yeah, yeah. There's you can also read books book. that you can oh, read. Oh, so they have real books on them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you can make the print bigger. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. So yeah, if you want to bring in your favorite device or whatever, and I can walk you through that if you'd like. It is spelled L I B B Y. Yep, uh -huh. L I B B Y. Um, yep. So those are that's it for general announcements. So on staff news, we're fully staffed. Um, we had a, an opening, and instead of having to get over two hundred applications again, um, that we were able to um, offer to the next person who was our runner-up from the previous job opening. So and she's been great. So we're fully staffed, and I don't anticipate we'll have any staffing shortages for the foreseeable future, but obviously that could change. Um, so updates, so the the snow awning that I want to build out in the back of the library, that was approved by the mayor and the city council in this year's budget. I'm hoping to have it done by, the, by winter this year. Right now it's actively being engineered, and then I hope to put it out to bid by the end of next week, or hopefully at least the first week of September, so we can get it done by the end of the year. We're also getting a new boiler. That's not, I'm not managing that project. That's the Parks and Rec Department who manages building maintenance. So we're getting a new boiler and it'll basically just mean, it'll probably, it'll save the library money on the year to year basis. Just, it'll be much 10, it's like 10 times more efficient is what the vendor said about with natural gas and all that. So um, next, I'm hoping to zero escape this front section right in front of these windows where you have all the molehills. <laughs> Um, groundhogs, whatever they are. Um, I'm hoping to zero escape that probably this next spring. So, and then I'll see if we can get any more um, capital funds from the, from the city for next year as well. Um, we've we've purchased and installed an AED in the library. I don't know if you saw it or not when you came in. It's over by the circulation desk on the pillar, right before you get to the DVDs and stuff. So I, I can show you that after too. Um, we've installed the security card access that I talked about in the last meeting, and we're going to be adding some security cameras just to, there's a couple spots where our cameras don't get great coverage right now, and I want to fill those in. I'm hoping to have that done in, by the end of September. And then I mentioned last time that our hotspots, we had the 10 hotspots and we were doing fine there. I'm actually adding two more. They have been now very popular. Our drawer is empty and you have to put a hold on. So I'm adding a couple more, so that's awesome. And then our um, Haunted Historic Park in October is our big event that's coming up that we partner with the Parks and Rec team. Um, and we're excited for that. We had over 2.8 million minutes read for summer reading. Wow. Oh. So we, we, we blew past our goal of 2.5 million, so that was awesome. Um, and then for the meeting today, the, the one policy change that I have for you is literally just a clarification and a minor grammar fix. Um, so we'll talk about that when we get to that point in the agenda. Any questions? My husband would like more like Louis L'Amour books. <laughs> hey, tell him, send me an email, fill out the purchase request form. And no, I mean in Libby. Oh, in Libby. Same thing. Same thing? Yeah, same thing. Have, have him fill out the purchase request of which ones he wants, and I'll see if they're even available to purchase, and I'll try to purchase them if they're available. So can I clarify a little bit? Yes. Uh, to order, to try to get a book the library doesn't have, and I've heard you send an email and you try to purchase it. Yeah. How does that differentiate from Libby? 
So you can do it either way. So if you want to, if there's an ebook or an audio book that you want, or a physical book, or even a physical. Let's talk about physical books. Yeah, the, you can either there's a form that you can get from the circulation desk, um, and then you just turn that in and I review it, or you can fill it out online and email it to me, whichever works. How do you get it? Just you can ask the, at the front desk, or it's online under our forms, policies forms. and forms. It's just right there, and then you just email that to me. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Have yes. you guys started planning the historic haunted park thing, your your booth, and can we help? Or I would like to um, help. <laughs> I would have, have to calls. check with um, Melissa. Awesome. So I will shoot you an email on that. Melissa always emails us because we always put up the a display. So she just emails me when it's time, and <laughs> I say, "Okay." <laughs> okay, I will have. I'll. I'll. We'll, we'll follow up on that. Okay. I also realized that I was only looking at your your whole list here, not the actual agenda. So oh, I'm going to okay. go back okay. to the public comment period. We don't have anybody here, so we can move on from the public comment period. Um, okay. Have, have you had members of the public for these meetings before? I've been One. doing this for what, like almost, same with Berta, almost three years, two years, one person. One person who was upset over this display. Yeah, so last year we had a banned books display and some of the books on that display are uh, very much adult books um, in nature, and she was complaining that her teenage son was looking at it and that we'd put it in a spot where it was very prominent. And so she was just asking if we could consider moving it so it's more in the adult section and not as So easy. that's what led to you moving that? It, it, was, it was a factor. It wasn't the only reason. Um, I thought that the display was more, would be more appropriate, so it's clearly in the adult section, not as because it's a lot of the book books on there are very much adult books. So. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Good. Well, we did do a how you doing already, but please welcome Chanel and Malcolm. Um, we're very excited to have you guys. <laughs> we have a fully staffed library program. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's do the community and reading room. Policy minor edit. So you each should have a copy of the community reading room policy. Um, the only change that I'm making is under section 2.4. So our programs policy, we had it, a little clause in there that we don't allow people to sell things at the library. However, we did have one exception to that, and that's if a author is doing a book signing or some sort of book launch event here at the library they can sell their book too. Um, that exception was in the programs policy and I realized that we need to add it we needed to add it to this policy as well because people an author would book this room that we're in right now and then they could sell their book out of it just for the just for the duration of that event. Has that happened? It has not in my time here. Several of my um, coworkers have said it, it happened once or twice in like the time they've worked here over 10, 20 years. Um, and we do have one actually scheduled for September. So a local author that writes, oh, what's her name? I don't have it in front of me, but called Skip Thomas. So they have little kids' books about a dog. Um, they're launching the next one, Skip Thomas's Birthday, I think is what it's called. And that's going to be, I think it's the second Saturday of September. I'd have to double check. But they're going to do their own advertising. So as part of it, we don't advertise these events outside like we're not going to put it on our Facebook page or things like that but what we would do is just we would put up some signage about it saying hey this author is coming um, so basically the red is just that we're adding that the rooms may not be used for commercial purposes exceptions may be granted to this clause at the discretion of the library director if the person utilizing the room is a published author doing a book signing or event for his or her own book um, I'm going to be very liberal with my definition of published author because there's a lot of indie authors, things like that. So basically the definition is just, is your book purchasable by the general public in any way? And if it is, you count as a published author, so you can sign up to do an event here. 
and sell your book while during the event. So any questions about that? I want to know about the funding for the signage that you're talking about. Would that come from the library? The, no, no, so, oh, so essentially, yeah, no, 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 they do all, they would pay all the advertising. What I'm talking about is like, if they give me a sign to put up, right. we would put that up. Okay. And that's I the extent. Yeah. So they provide it. Yeah, yeah, they provide it. We don't, okay. yeah. So, okay, any questions on that? I make a motion we accept the um, exceptions um, clause on the community and reading room policy. Can I get a second? I will second the motion. Thank you, Berna, for motioning and Crystal for a second. Melody, for you. Okay. Uh, let's do the updated vote. Oh, we got to vote. Oh, we have to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down all of the steps, too, because I always forget what they are. <laughs> uh, all approving the community and reading room policy update. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. <laughs> and then if you could all please stay after, I'll get the, the form for you to actually sign. So, okay. Okay, community, yeah, we just did that one. Updated library signage. So um, if you could all stay after this meeting for just a couple of minutes, I've got to get the the updated policy for y'all to sign, and then I also want to get your feedback on library signage. So, when people come into the library, how are they supposed to know where the children's section is? Where's the junior? Where's adult? Where's young adult? You kind of just, there's no signage pointing to it. One of the things I've noticed when I've gone to other libraries is that they'll have big signs designating, hey, here's the YA novels, here's the adult novels, here's DVDs, movies, Here's the information desk. Here's the circulation desk. And I feel like that's something that we could really benefit with. Like, I, I, it made me think back my first time walking into this library. I remember being like, okay, where am I going? Where is everything? And I just think it's something that will really help, especially new patrons. Um, and so I'd like your guys' input on what signs and where, uh, because I'm here every single day, so I could walk around blindfolded probably. Um, but it'd be good to get, I'd love to have your guys' feedback on that after this meeting. So, yeah, great. so we'll talk more about that after the meeting. Um, so next is a strategic plan. So as part of our certification with the state, they require that every library have both a technology plan and a strategic plan uh, that it covers at least three years. So I've got these as draft documents, and I'm not saying that we're going to vote on these today. Um, I would just like if you guys could review these and be ready for our next board meeting to see if you have any questions, concerns, proposed edits that we can discuss. And these aren't meant like, yes, we're checking a box by doing these, but I still want them to still be real, like, yes. These are things that I want to that the library want needs to wants or needs to accomplish over the next three years, and then we'll update these every three years um, for both the strategic plan as well as our technology plan, so we can make sure that the Felicity Library that we're staying on top of new library trends, um, that we're providing good service to the patrons of Tula City. Um, so I don't know if we want to read through them all, like everything on here. Um, I think I'll, I'd like to just read at least the mission statement, vision statement, and then the some of the goals for the library, and then um, we don't have to spend too much time on it because we'll discuss more at the next meeting. But uh, my proposed mission statement is uh, the Twilla City Public Library exists to spark literacy, foster lifelong learning, and support the community in the quest to seek the good, the true, and the beautiful. And our vision statements is that the Twilla City Public library will provide the community with fair and equal access to vital information resources including the greatest invention in human history the written word uh, materials programs and technology offered by the library will adapt to a rapidly growing community and our amazing teams of librarians and programmers will give outstanding service to the community in a warm and welcoming environment and then there's a little spiel about the library and then on page just two and three under each um, under each vision statement, I have objectives or I have goals that I would like the library to, to meet to help kind of fulfill that vision. So um, in the interest of not taking up too much time, like I said, I think just if you guys could all read these, 
and provide feedback at the next board meeting. Or you can email me before too, I guess, and we can still talk about it. Um, same thing, technology plan. Um, it's same. It's basically just a subset of the strategic plan. You could say um, that it, it it talks about our mission statement, but then it also just goes into what our current technology offerings are, and then what my goals are for the next three years with regards to technology, um, and to make sure that we're staying on top of it and we're not running any Windows 98 computers or things like that. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. I was surprised when I read this and that there was 48 computers available for the public. Yeah, because we have all the, the desktops, but then we also have a bunch of laptops that we use for like uh, digital me. Like we had a um, the youth of of our ward come and they they, were, they did a whole online safety training and were able to yeah. bust out all the laptops and that's useful for programs. Uses that when they have um, programs that are related to technology and stuff like that. I was also interested when I read it home that there's a microfilm reader here. I didn't realize that was still a thing. Yeah, so we do have our microfilm reader. It, it, if you'll look, if you notice, under 2026 goals, uh, I have that we're going to replace that because it is, it's been around quite a while. It's very big. It's cumbersome. We only allow people to use it with our microfilm, like the, the microfilm we have. We don't let people bring in microfilm that they have that they want to look at just because we don't want the liability of if our machine breaks it. So I'm hopeful to get a new one that will mitigate that concern. So what, what, what is on microfilm here? So we have all of the transcript bulletins going back years. We actually had a person come and look at that. They were trying to find a specific article and it wasn't digitized, I guess, yet. So I was looking for that one particular issue of the newspaper. So, And we have a several other things, but that's the main one. How far back do you have that? I would have to go look. I don't remember off the top of my head. Just curious. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Any questions or concerns about the technology plan or the strategic plan for right now? Or okay. How many laptops do you have? Ooh. Did it say? I'm sorry if it did. I missed that. See, I think we just have... I don't think I broke it out. Yeah, I think we just have, okay. yeah, 48. So I guess whatever, 48 minus whatever's over at the there. desktops minus that number. Well, I was just wondering, to do classes, how many people you can accommodate? Yeah, I think we have we have over 20. I would have to count. I don't have that off the top of my head. But. Okay. Okay, uh, now the minor access policy um, discussion. So if you look, I, you all have a copy of our standards of conduct policy that we updated back in October. And you are all so patient with me for our two hour <laughs> meeting. Um, so if you look on the standards of conduct policy and what uh, this, this item on the agenda is referring to is specifically section nine. Um, nine and 10, but mostly nine. Um, so I guess I'll read it and then we can, Crystal, wherever you want to take the discussion. So. 9 and 10 is totally different from before? So no, this it's, it's the same, but just um, Crystal wanted to discuss it. So um, so essentially the current policy is, is that minors under the age of 10 must be accompanied and adequately supervised on-premise by a parent, a legal guardian, or other responsible adult individual accepting responsibility for the minor. Minors between the ages of 10 and 18 must be accompanied and adequately supervised on-premise by a parent or a legal guardian. Alternatively, the minor may be allowed entrance slash access if a written authorization and acceptance of responsibilities on file with the library signed by a parent or legal guardian, form is provided, form provided by library personnel. Patrons will be refused entrance to the building if proof of age 18 or older cannot be verified, cannot be provided upon request. For minors attending programs, events, or activities in the reading rooms or community room, um, refer to that policy. And then the library director has some limited discretion to consider and adapt to unusual or urgent circumstances in implementing and enforcing this policy. So essentially this is what was put in place after in March in March 2023 when the library shut down for a month due to all of the problems that, that the library was having and it was primarily um, groups of teenagers that were causing a significant majority of the problems 
and this was implemented in a, as a way to help keep the library safe because uh, almost all of the staff members were about to quit essentially and so this is the policy that was that the mayor implemented and we've been now doing this now for over a year and a half since then since April of um, 2023 where if you're between the ages of 10 to 17 for you to be in the library without an adult you have to have the minor access card and to get that card the parent or legal guardian just has to come in and basically fill out a form and then we give the card and then staff members keep an eye out and if it seems like an unaccompanied um, minor is coming in between those ages of 10 to 17 they just ask hey do you have the card and if they do then they're good to go um yeah so so i just had been i had asked uh how it was going if we had any problems lately if the policy was working do we need the policy um just because it is an unusual one for a library yes um so chase said that it had been going really well um, yeah, so uh, we haven't had we've, we haven't had any major issues with with any of with any unaccompanied minors since this policy was put into place. I, we've had a couple that we we had one um, girl that was vaping, um, but we didn't we were checking on the cameras because we thought we smelled something. We looked on the cameras, we saw that yeah, she was vaping in the back of the adult section. But by the time as we were looking at the video camera to confirm, she left and she hasn't been back. So that was an example of where we would have given her a written warning, um, but she left before we could, and she hasn't been back. Um, we had a couple others, same thing, that we just had to give verbal warnings or written warnings to, but we haven't had to like trespass or expel any anyone um, in that age range. We have had to trespass and expel several adults for um, some behavior, only a handful though over the last year. For, for what type what of behavior? Um, <laughs> so one, because, he appeared to be either he was supposed to be on meds and he was not on them or he was on something he's not supposed to be on because he came in and was behaving a little erratically saying a lot of things that made no sense and uh, behaving like many curse words and stuff and so he was asked to leave and he didn't and then he was asked to leave again and he did but then he came back and started cussing out um, one of my staff members so we did call the police and they escorted him out um, and so he was trespassed and expelled. Um, and then we had another individual who um, was viewing pornography and slash attempting to view pornography and possible possibly child pornography on our in our computer lab. Um, and we track we, we see all the logs, so I don't know why he thought he was going to get away with it. And so yeah, we told him we we at first gave him a short, strict warning. He was expelled for a month and a half. Um, after the first offense, and then was told if you tow out of line, you're done. And he came back and did it again, so he was expelled. Um, I haven't had any problems with him since. I haven't seen him. So um, those were the only two cases that we've had to fully expel someone. I've given multiple written warnings to patrons that were misbehaving or cussing out staff or things like that, but nothing that we've had to escalate. Yeah. So. So that, that's that's those are the the couple that we've had. I, my father is a police officer up in Logan. He was telling me about that he had to arrest two people at the library up there for uh, viewing pornography and then also escalating to public lewdness. So yeah, so we keep a close eye on that. Don't have any. We haven't had any other issues aside from that one patron. So okay. Well, I wanted to discuss. Um, I really like the fact that there are consequences to behavior, but do we think it's necessary to continue with flagging minors at the door? Is it still a problem? Should we keep it there for a while? Does anyone have opinions on this? So to, to add a little more, sorry, to add a little more context before you open it up, we're the only library in the state that does this. Every other library, um, and actually it's kind of frowned upon because right, we're denying access or we're making it difficult. and. And I definitely get that. Um, I, in fact, I recently read um, Trump's VP picks uh, his uh, memoir, Hillbilly Elegy. There's a little section in there that he mentions that one of the things that helped him kind of get ready for college was that he would go to the library. And, and his, his mom was in a state where it probably would have been difficult for her to get a, him to get a pass to come into the library. And you can highlight those kind of stories all the time, right? Of, um, but it, as I've, I've I've talked to staff since we had our discussion, Crystal, and um, several have been like, yeah, I think it, 
we could do without it. I have, however, I have had almost an equal number, a minority, but still close to an equal number, say that they love the current policy and they want it to continue. Um, uh, so I can. So that that's the context. Feel free to see. I I, I was worried. Sorry, I was just say I I wasn't. I understood why they put it in place, but I felt like it was restricting. Yeah. And um, and so that's why I was wondering if maybe with the change of leadership that maybe things yeah. we if, can uh, ease up. As I understand it, the reason it was put in was because there are problems. You put it in, and now there's not a problem. It seems like it's a working policy that's being successful. The thing that I had noticed when I would visit the library was most of the problems were from kids over at Tool High School, as long as that's only a block away and they have major issues with attendance, I think we need the policy. Because the school's not willing to do very much. They don't have the resources. And that was that was what a lot of staff said too, is that it would be kids sloughing um, from school or, or after school coming over here to hang well, out. It was and then, during school hours when yeah. they would come, yeah. yeah. And there was... And there were, there were some fights that happened, yeah. like there was a lot of vaping, staff didn't feel safe and stuff like that. Those kids weren't here to use the library, they were here to avoid being in class. Can we just... Um, oh, sorry, it might be the same thing. Go so ahead. During school hours. Yeah. This is the policy during school hours. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So my only, I, I, just, my, my concern with that, because that was a suggestion that I thought of, um, but then what about homeschooled kids? Like, would we yeah. just need, say, a note, like, would we just say, hey, a note stay yeah, or the homeschooled same, or something? Yeah. From Legal Guardian? Well, I know as a kid, you know, I grew up in Stockton, which didn't have anything, um, but we had a bookmobile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was raised by my grandparents, and if they would have told me I couldn't come into the bookmobile and I couldn't, um, you know, get a book out, I wouldn't have been able to because my grandma went and went over there. <laughs> you know, this, this doesn't really seem like it's all that burdensome um, policy. Get a card, turn a sign, you know, I mean, it's, it doesn't sound like it's really that hard to deal to live with that policy. I was like, having a nine-year-old, almost nine-year-old, he would love to be able to come in and grab his hands. <laughs> and so that's where I run it to it a little bit. I mean, it's not a big deal. He's just counting down the days till he's 10. But like he legit is like, one more year, mom. <laughs> but, but that's just where we run into it is he's like, can I go grab my holds? I'm like, yeah, hold on. Let me get the other two out of the car. Like, so <laughs> I mean, which is not a big some deal, libraries, some libraries have the cutoff age as eight. Yeah. So I don't know if you look, if you Google yeah. a bunch of other libraries, they're unattended minor policy. It's interesting to see the little distinctions. Um, but I think no, and yeah. So, I, but I think that's worth exploring. Like maybe just during school hours. But I mean, ultimately, this this is the policy the mayor kind of emergency put into place. Um, I do have a meeting with her next Tuesday. I was, she might push back. So I'll talk yeah. to her on Tuesday and see. But. Have you had parents complain about the policy? Like, has it been difficult for some people? I mean, you've yeah, we've had a handful that really got up in arms about it. Um, was it more first the, when it started, or has it kind um, of been most, uh, There was some when it first started, but most most have been very understanding of it. Um, there's been a couple instances where I have allowed, with some exceptions, um, just due to the circumstance and stuff like that. So I have had you exercise some of that discretion based on some unique circumstances, or if they're just coming to pick up a hold, maybe, hey, like we'll just follow you over, and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts? Or? Speaking as the parent of a child who has a card like this, he actually feels much safer coming into the library. Now, does that make sense? Yeah. Because it's making it so that kids who who might cause these problems are not around, around inside, right? Sometimes they're loitering outside. So you come to safe zone. Right. And that, for my particular child, is a big deal for him. Yeah. Okay. So I have seen positive things personally. Okay. Well, I think we have a lot of both sides. It's kind of hearing from your staff and hearing from everybody here. There's a lot of positives and potential negatives, but maybe a, a maybe tweak then, like the 
you know, during school hours and, yeah. and maybe bring the date of the age down. Yeah. yeah. To eight. To eight. I do think our community is quite responsible. I I don't experience rowdy kids very often that are the younger, obviously the <laughs> the day high school kids, but Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I started crying when his baby brother was, he was walking with him, he started screaming, he's like, he's screaming in the library. I was like, <laughs> it's okay. And he like ran in the like he's crying and I was walking with him. I was like, it's okay. We had a kid yesterday that I think he missed his nap, but he was just screaming at the top of his lungs, like, Mom, I want a book. Or, and I didn't know the context, but he just yeah. kept screaming it over and over again. So it's, oh my God. Mine was just being pulled, hold my hand by his big brother. He's like, he screamed. Okay. <laughs> he was so stressed. But I mean, you could definitely leave in there the, the limited discretion, library. so like for the homeschool kids. And yeah. Yeah. Things like yeah. That. Okay. I know one of the other issues was, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, somebody was actually dropping up. There's a kid would come after school and stay here until the mom got like off daycare. work. That's right. Yeah, that was a... I, I mean, we do have, yeah, we have that in, if you look under section 10, we do state the library assumes no responsibility for unattended minors and the library must not be used as an alternative for daycare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, I, but then again, that's where that's why we're specifically saying that if you are under the age of 10, if you're 0 to 9, you have to be here with a responsible adult individual. Yeah. Um, one thing I've thought about with this is maybe changing that to state a responsible person at least 16 or older, because um, we've had some cases of like older sibling bringing in younger sibling. Um, so that's a change that I've thought about. Um, just That's a good one, I think. So in this case, it would have to be a 16 or 17 year old who does have a pass yes. to bring in the younger one. Mm -hmm. um, if that, I can explore that as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious like to see what the mayor says, what her opinion is. Yeah, yeah. And I have a meeting with her this Tuesday, so yeah. I'll talk about it with her because, and, and and like I said, I did have several staff members that were distraught at the idea that if it if it goes away. Um, I had others that were... the ones that were here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the ones, the, the new ones sense. that have been hired, the, yeah, the new ones that have been hired kind of could take it or leave it. Um, but, but, but amongst the staff that were here, it was basically kind of a 50-50, about a 50-50 split between those that said, hey, I think we'd be fine. We've got cameras. We've got a better enforcement, a better culture. Um, and then half that were like, please don't. Please keep it as is. staff yeah. members are there um, so 15 in total, counting myself. So there's, so there's me, my two supervisors, and then there's three of our programs team, and then the rest are librarians. librarians. What do the programs team do? Are you talking about like the programs like the historical park? Yes, the, the, story, that time, and the story time. The magician that came. Yes, all those. Okay. Yeah. I have some ideas on that one, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can definitely send me an email. And we okay, can, we can I will. Talk about I didn't that, think so. about it, but... It's just that there, you, once you got trapped in there, if the kids had to go to the restroom, it was hard for them to get out and around because you didn't leave any access for them to oh, yeah. get it's, out. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was a lot of kids, you know, so they're trying to walk among the kids to get to the back to get, and even in the back, because the chairs were in that U, there was no place for them to get out and mm -hmm. go to the restroom. <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, we can definitely look at that for so next maybe day. just one access. <laughs> okay. okay, any other thoughts, questions, comments? So to, to summarize, um, I'm going to discuss it with the mayor and get her feedback. Um, some of the things that we, like question marks that we'll follow up with in our next meeting uh, would be maybe maybe if it's in, only in pol enforced during school hours with exceptions for homeschool that they would have to have a pass or something like that um lower the possibly lower the age to maybe eight or nine possibly um but also maybe um make it so like a a 16 or 17 year old can bring in um, a younger child if that 16 or 17 year old has a pass themselves something like that um anything else um this paragraph and under section 10 there that says that it's assumed that minors who visit the library unattended authorized by a parent guardian select use the full range so 
if one comes in and gets a book that the parent then decides is inappropriate, yes. too bad. I mean, they have surrendered that ability to say, shame on you, because they let them come in by themselves. Yeah, no, so that, what that's saying is basically like, we, we're, we, don't poli we, we have self-checkout kiosks. If a, if a minor comes in and gets a book that the parent thinks is inappropriate, that's not on us as librarians to police that, that's on the parent to police that. And they're allowed, to, if I correct me if I'm wrong, they're allowed to do that if they have their own library card. Yeah. Um, where, like, if you do it, if you have your library card, then they would have to check it out under yours. Yeah, and that's up to the parent to get a card for their minor child. So. And then once that minor child turns 18, they actually have to come in and get a new card as an adult. So. Okay. Um, and one, there, and I guess one other thing with the new catalog system that we'll be getting, um, something I'm hoping to do, no promises, is that people will be able to apply for and get a library card completely online. So that would make the minor access policy easier as well, because that's kind of the big hang up is, oh, I gotta go get mom to come in and fill out this form. Whereas with that, we could also adapt it for that as well. So essentially kind of, is all still theoretical. We got to make sure the new system's in, but it, that's how Spanish Fork does that, that you can get a library card online and then you just have to come in within 30 days. Um, I've thought about, we could even set it up where you do a Zoom call and that's the way I would validate the person's identity to be like, okay, your photo ID matches you and then we can mail you a card. So that way if someone in Vernon wants to get a library card from us, they don't even have to set foot in. They, and that way they can get Libby and Canopy without uh, even. Right. So something else to think about. Um, that wouldn't be effective until probably at least a year from today, but so on my to-do list. Cool. Okay, I'll, like I said, so I'll discuss with the mayor and then I'll report to the board um, at our next meeting what uh, what she said, and then we can go for either go from there, make some tweaks, or go from there. So. Um, has everyone had a chance to look over last quarter's minutes? Any issues or corrections that you see? I didn't see any. Yeah, I spelling. Besides, Besides the spelling. spelling. <laughs> yep, Besides the spelling. You hear that, Melody? <laughs> Melody was absent last one too, or last meeting too, huh? No, Melody Goches. I'm no, I know, but I'm oh, just looking yeah. at the. She's in here today. She didn't have her name on it. Okay. Something about spelling. <laughs> 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 Listen, I have, <laughs> this is not a hill that we die on. Okay. So I am fine as long as the bylaws oh. are clear. <laughs> and, and oh, one more thing. So I hand out to everybody a copy of the board's bylaws um, governing how the board is supposed to function. So it's been this way since 2016. So I don't know if I'll sort of good to review that and see if there's any tweaks or changes that need to be made to it. Okay, can I get a motion to approve April 18th, 2024, Library Board Meeting minutes? I will so move. Okay, thank you, I'll Malcolm. I'll second. Thank you, Berta. All right, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, our minutes have been approved. All right. Motion to adjourn. Well, so uh, let's do next meetings. Oh, yes. Uh, date. date. Yes. <laughs> So I'm just ready to so right now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when would next quarter be? So on the, we we discussed last time October 24th at 7 p.m. Does that still work? Or are we October what? Sorry. 24th. 24th at 7 p.m. I still have it in there. Yeah. As long as it's in there, I'm good. <laughs> actually, I actually have a standing engagement now the third Thursday yeah. every month. Okay. But I think that one might be fine because it's the fourth. It's a Thursday, you know, so. But I'm just thinking how to be the club. And they're like, no, we're doing it the third Thursday. Dang it. We can yeah. change it if needed, right? I think yeah. this one will be okay, but I think maybe for starting in the. Readjust. Yeah, maybe in the new year. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay, so next meeting's date will be October 24th at 7 o'clock. Here at the library. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? 
Welcome to a jerk. Can I get a second? Awesome. Uh, thank you, Eric. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, meeting adjourned. I'm good for signage, by the way, because I think that's a great idea. Okay. Um,